All right, well, here is an example of how to create a frequency table, a frequency histogram, and a frequency polygon. Um, for this example right here, I've got um, the number of children on, in a particular neighborhood per street. And if you want to take the time to type them into um, the calculator like I have, um, it's a good place to begin in terms of trying to sort through all the data that I've given. So if you take the time to type in to the calculator by pressing stat, by pressing stat and enter, you can type them into the calculator as I've done under list one. And you can pause the video if you need to do that and open it up again when it's time to go. Uh, we, we need to actually figure out how large to make our bars for the histogram. And to do that, we calculate something called the class width. The class width is the width of each bar. And the formula is very simple. It's just the range divided by the number of bars that are being requested or the number of bars that you think might be necessary. Usually between 5 and 12 bars is pretty common for a histogram. Uh, for this example here, we're going to use 5 just to make the um, work a little bit simpler. So for this particular example here, um, with the largest being 40, and the minimum being 8, we're going to do the calculation of 32 divided by 5 to figure out our class width. Came out to be 6.4. And regardless of what that number is, you want to find the greatest integer that it would round up to. Um, so the answer would be 7 for the class width. That means we want to make each width of each bar 7 kids wide. Um, on my table here, even though I need only five bars, I'm going to need seven rows to display all my information, and that's to do the frequency polygon at the end. So we're going to start in the second row here with our lowest number on the list, which was eight, and we're going to work our way up by sevens, and this is the neatest way to do that. Start here, I keep on adding seven each step along the way. And then it'll, then it'll make sure that our bars come out to be a width of 7 if we go up by 7s. You also have to backtrack by 7 for that first row right there. Once you've done that, we're going to make these intervals. So this is going to be 1 to 7 because this one starts with 8. This is going to be 8 to 14. This one, 15 to, 22, to 21, 22 to 28, and that's probably the easiest way to work this out. If you've done it this way, you're guaranteed that each width of every bar includes seven different number of kids. And then we need to go another seven from here, so it would be 40. The tally marks, you may have seen those before, that's when you actually go to each one, 40, and find out where it is in the intervals. So 40, you cross it out, 15, and place one here, and you can go through it one by one like that to make sure that you get the right number in each, in each interval. So 12 places us here, 11, 15, 14, 11, 15, 14, 20, and 8, and 32 and 36. Okay. Once that's done, you can fill out the frequencies. There is none in this category. 4 here, 5 here, 0, 1, 2, and 0. The relative frequency is how many are in each interval divided by how many were actually there. Since we're looking at 12 streets, the relative frequency here would be 0 out of 12. The relative frequency here would be 4 out of 12 and 5 out of 12. And 0 out of 12, 1 out of 12, 2 out of 12, and 0 out of 12. These can be converted into percentages, and it would just relay the information of like what percent of the, the streets had between 8 and 14 kids, 
it would be a third or 33%. Um, for the class midpoints, class midpoints are the numbers that are halfway in between each of the classes, and you need those to complete your frequency polygon. So halfway between 1 and 7 would be 4. Halfway between 8 and 14 would be 11. And you can see I just, I was being very lazy in terms of figuring out the midpoints. I just added the numbers that were on each side of the class and then divided by 2. Or you could just figure that out in your head without using the calculator. Uh, once you get it going, you notice that these are also separated by 7, which is, the, which is the class width. So if you wanted to just keep on adding 7, just like the last, just like how the table began, that's totally fine too, and it's kind of a quick way to, um, to work your way through that. So if you add, it would be 25, and then you add another 7, it would be 32, and then another 7, it would be 39, another 7 after that would be 40. Let me just look There we go. All right. Once that's all done, we're ready to build the histogram, and here it is. Camera. All right, as far as the histogram goes, it would look like this. You set up your axes, the class width still beneath. You start with zero, and then since there's no information between zero and the first bar, you put this little um, gap symbol right there. And we're going to need altogether five bars plus an empty bar on each side. So when it's seven spaces right across, all of them the same width. And then you start labeling your classes on there. So 1 to 7, 8 to 14, 15 to 21, 22 to 28, 29 to 35, 36 to 42, 43 to 49. And then we have the frequencies. I can write them on here to help me construct my graph. So we have a height of 0, a height of 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, and 0. The highest one was 5, so we only need 5 spaces high on the frequency part of the of the display and we'll put our, our classes down here or our intervals right here. This is uh, how many kids on the street. And this bar is a height of zero, this one is a height of four. And you know with a ruler and taking time to make sure it's really nice and neat, you can lay out Nice looking histogram. You know what the other techniques to actually construct the histogram, but this is just a set technique that a lot of books end up using. Our, our textbook uses this method. Um, that is the frequency histogram. The frequency polygon connects the midpoints of each of these intervals. And we have the midpoints calculated, but we don't actually need to actually locate them you know, on the scale, we can just put a midpoint under each of these, each of these bars. The bar is zero, the midpoint would go right on the x-axis, and then we can connect with straight lines. And that gives you an impression of the general um, distribution in terms of how the streets populate kids. Um, and I guess technically for the frequency polygon, these would then disappear. And that's how you turn a frequency histogram into a frequency polygon.